Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm pleased you called this hearing to examine the 2011-2012 tax extenders. However, I should note my frustration that Congress has once again allowed so many of these important tax provisions to expire. I'm also discouraged that we're now just examining the 2011 extenders, even though they expired several months ago. Important principles of tax policy are certainty and predictability. We need to remember these principles as we deal with the tax extenders. Many of the tax provisions that expired in 2011 are priorities of mine. For example, New Markets tax credits and Build America bonds are very important. The New Markets tax credit is designed to stimulate investment and economic growth in low-income communities that are traditionally overlooked by conventional capital markets. And we've seen the result in all of our districts. In Western Massachusetts, local New Markets tax credit success stories include small businesses like the River Valley Market in Northampton and the Massachusetts High Green Performance Computing Center in Holyoke. We need to extend It's my hope markets. that as we move forward on comprehensive tax reform, we can move away from the need to have the extenders discussion every year altogether. And I'd like to highlight just a few of the extenders that I do think are worthy of extension or being made permanent as a part of I'm also a co-sponsor of the New Market Tax Credit, which was mentioned earlier. And this credit would provide that 39 percent seven-year credit against federal taxes for investment in economically distressed communities. These credits go to areas that otherwise would not see investment or benefit businesses located in low-income communities. In my district alone, the credits have created about 150 jobs. The credit has been extended three times, and I believe it. Thank you, Mr. Be Chairman. I'd like again. to thank you and Chairman Camp and Ranking Member Neal for your leadership in initiating a comprehensive review of these tax extenders and for allowing all members to offer their views. There's no doubt about the necessity of transforming our tax code. We need to move from the current hodgepodge of frustratingly complex rules that burden our small business owners and hamper our country's competitiveness to a more streamlined, more simple to understand, a more dynamic system that unleashes innovation and ingenuity and encourages investment, hiring, and growth. While it's important to shed many provisions to snuff out that snuff out opportunity and bury job creators under the ream after ream of paperwork, it's also paramount that we preserve those policies that have proven successful and allow individuals, owners of businesses, and communities to thrive. Today I'd like to highlight three extenders that the farmers, property owners, and small business owners, who I'm fortunate to represent, believe are worthy of We also of need extending. to encourage investment in our communities, some of which are struggling even before the most recent economic downturn. The New Markets Tax Credit is designed to stimulate investment and economic growth in low-income, underserved communities that are often overlooked by conventional capital markets. According to the GAO, 88 percent of new market tax credit investors surveyed would not have made the investment in low-income communities without the credit. According to the Treasury Department, every one dollar of foregone tax revenues under this tax credit program leverages twelve dollars in private investment in distressed communities on a cost basis. I'm pleased to be original co-sponsor along with Chairman T. Berry, Congressman Neal, and Congressman Lewis of H.R. 2655 and this bill would extend the credit through 2016 at a level of $5 billion per year. I now recognize the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Larson. I thank the chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank Chairman Tiberi and also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Neal as, as well for their uh, outstanding work with all the kudos and plaudits that have been laid at their feet this morning. Uh, I'm going to focus on uh, three primary areas the CFC uh, look uh, through uh, new market tax credits and uh, Section 181 of the production credit. I hope that our takeaway from this uh, hearing is a clear understanding we must act responsibly to enact a extenders package, and I hope today's hearing uh, marks uh, a, a very positive first step <laughs> in that direction. With that will turn to the general from California, Mr. Costa. You are recognized for. Thank you very much. Uh Chairman DeBerry and, and Ranking Member uh, Neal for hosting this subcommittee effort. Uh, you have uh, uh, a difficult task with you uh, today. Uh, we have a number of expiring tax uh, measures before the House Ways and Means Committee as well as the Congress, and um, they all have uh, varying degrees of merit. And obviously, uh, uh, as we look at comprehensive tax reform, uh, which I suspect we won't get to until next year, uh, is my view. Um, uh, all of these in interim uh, tax measures obviously have to be addressed in some fashion, and I'd like to talk about a few of them uh, in my testimony this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a number of 
benefits to companies and small businesses around the country. And in my district, a number of these tax measures provide incentives for biodiesel and renewable diesel, some of the renewable portfolio that my colleague was just speaking of, empowerment zone tax incentives, extensions of renewable electricity and production, a percentage uh, for the depletion for oil and gas is on marginal wells in Kern County. We have a lot of oil production and others. But I'd like to focus today on one tax extension which has been helpful to our constituents in the San Joaquin Valley, and that's the new market tax credits. Uh, I'm pleased to have joined with over 60 of my colleagues on a bipartisan basis to co-sponsor H.R. Uh, 2655, the New Market Tax Credit Act of 2011. Uh, two th uh, tw H.R. 2655 extends those credits for five years. Uh, I'd urge the committee to consider this measure as a, and adopt it as a part of whatever overall package you, you produce. At the national level, between the start of the program in 2003 and 2010, going back to the Bush administration, the new market tax uh, credits investments totaled $20.9 billion uh, during the, the project cost for the finance projects during that time, it was $45 billion around the country. I think that's a pretty good leverage in terms of, of investments that were made uh, of significant capital from other sources. This financing was mostly located uh, in high distress communities throughout the country. Uh, around 60 percent were located in communities where the unemployment rates were at least one and a half times the national average. Uh, in my congressional district, the new market tax credit investments totaled $60 million in total project costs. It came to a value of over $114 million, over a two-to-one or almost a two-to-one ratio. This is uh, significant investments and in areas uh, where, where capital investment is badly needed. Uh, so the leverage, I think, across the country and including my district is good. Recognizing the value of these new market tax credits in the San Juan King Valley that I represent, I introduced 20, H.R. 2740 last year, a bill that would help spur economic development in low-income communities. I'm aware of two situations that I want to bring to the attention of the subcommittee, and I'll close, uh, that are adjacent to universities, uh, both at Fresno State and the University of California in Merced, where no one has lived in certain census tracts at the time of the last sentence. But now, with the new census that has taken place, people live adjacent to these universities. Uh, so f there was no information on income available from the last census that was taken in 2001. Now there is. Uh, there is an uh, important student population that has taken residence adjacent to the universities. They're poised to continue to develop in that area to provide services to these students and to the university community. H.R. 2740 allows the new market tax credits to apply to where census tract information is not available or where a tract adjacent to two or more low-income communities did not exist. So I'd urge uh, the consideration of this measure as a part of the larger effort that the subcommittee will undertake. It would benefit, in this case, these two university communities that are important to the education of our future, uh, both at UC Merced as well as Fresno State. And uh, I'd be prepared to uh, ask, uh, answer any questions that the subcommittee might have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Costin. and thank you for your information on the new markets tax credit, which has uh, been pretty impactful in, in my district as well. And Mr. Neal has been a leader in, uh, in the Congress on that issue.